All right, so there's a little loop in this roller coaster. And we're going to have a baseline, just as always. I'm going to keep some of our old values. 20 meters up. 5 meters up. Ten meters up and zero meters. And I'm going to say that at the beginning here, velocity a is equal to zero meters per second. And we've done that once before. And we're going to give ourselves a mass for this roller coaster. Let's give ourselves a mass of nice round number, hundred kilogram mass. Okay. All digits being significant. And so for part A, and I'm going to ask people on this side of the room, can you guys please calculate the total mechanical energy at position A? Total mechanical energy. So E total at position A, EGA plus EKA. Can I ask a couple of people to calculate it over on the right hand side of the room to calculate? Mass times acceleration to the gravity times height at position A plus one half MVA squared. Oops. It's twenty meters. Give me one sec. What is it? 19,620. Do we have agreement? Well, yeah. Yeah? Okay, 19,620 joules. That's the total mechanical energy at the beginning. Do we, and have, so, hmm? Do we have to simplify that to uh, 19,000... 600? What? Oh, at the end, yeah. You never round until the end. Okay. Yeah. 19,620 joules, and we could simplify it down to uh, 19,600 for three sig figs, or uh, 1.96 times 10 to the power of 4. Okay? Okay. All right, so the total mechanical energy at point A. What's the total mechanical energy at point B, <laughs> C, and D? going to be, and we can, got, we can write it down as B, C, and D, if this was a 100% 100 efficient roller coaster. What could you tell me about the total energy at those points if, and we're not going to go there, but if, yeah? It's going to be the same. Yeah, exactly the same. Now here's what I want to let you in on. At point B, I want to claim that it's 80% efficient between here and here, between the beginning and, and the end. By point C, I want to claim that it's 55% efficient. And by point D, I want to claim that this whole roller coaster only can claim a 20% efficiency. Okay? And so now I want to find the total mechanical energy at B, C, and D. What would be a nice way to calculate that? Yeah? Yeah, I like it. So I could say, all right, E total at point B would be converted into decimals. It means the percentage, 0 0.80 times. ETA. ETC would just be 0 0.55 times ETA. And ETD would be 0 0.20 times ETA. Okay. And 0 0.8 times 19,620. 15,696. 96. Okay. Joules. What about at this position here? Can somebody tell me the total energy at C and then D? Oh, people are just catching up with the writing. Zen, did you get it? No. No calculator today? Uh, I see, I believe it's uh, 
10,791. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 10,000. It would be 3,924. 3,924. Beautiful. 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 All right. That's the total mechanical energies at these different points for the percent efficiency that we're going to claim. Now, I just want to choose one of them. I want to choose point C. And at point C, I want to find the gravitational potential energy. Okay? So I'm going to call it part C here. And I'm just going to put it off to the side. So for part C of our problem, find EG at point C on this track. So it's got a height of 10 meters. We say EGC is equal to mass times acceleration to gravity times height at position C. 100 kilograms times 9.81. times the nice round value of a height of 10 meters. So 10 times 100 times 9.81. That's going to be 1,000 times 9.81. Okay, 9,810 joules. Now let's check to make sure that this even works out. If the gravitational potential energy is 9,810 joules, is that greater than or less than what we've claimed the total energy should be? Less than. Less than. So what's left over then? A little bit of what type of energy? Kinetic. Kinetic. What if, and I don't want to go down this road too much, but what if the gravitational potential energy that we calculated was greater than <coughs> the efficiency suggested the total energy should be? What would that tell us about our roller coaster? It, it didn't make it up. You couldn't have possibly achieved that gravitational potential energy because you didn't have enough total energy to get there. So you would have kind of gone up one side and uh, kind of coasted back down again. You wouldn't <laughs> have made it, right? So if your total energy doesn't get you up to the top of the loop, because you don't have enough to get there, you're not going to get there. But in this case, we did. We got there. Okay. So I want to shift over to a new sheet of paper. The next step, you can guess, what type of energy are we going to calculate next at position C? Kinetic. Kinetic, OK. Let me fold this up. I'll just leave it underneath the paper. What part are we on? Part D? Find the kinetic energy at position C. Which total energy should we use? ETA, ETB, ETC, ETD? ETA. Oh. Or at position C, which total energy should we use? ETC. Okay. Is equal to ETG plus E, sorry, ETG, ECG rather, EKC. I messed up my subscripts there, EGC. And we want to find EKC. So EK at position C is equal to E total at position C because it's going to be different than at position A because of this whole uh, percentage efficiency thing, minus EG at position C. And we calculated those values previously to be 10,791 joules. Is that right? Yes. OK. Yes. Wonderful. And EGC, just a second ago, we calculated to be, what was it, 9,000 something or other? OK, 810 joules. That sounds familiar. In fact, it, it's kind of odd, but it equals 981. Oh, does it? The numbers just work out that way? Apparently. OK, 981. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Did yeah, someone confirm that? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. we it's confirmed. The motion carries. Yeah. All right. Now, if I was going to do a part E to this, a part E, find the speed. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Yes, we can do it. EK at position C is one half MVC squared. Yeah. Oh, that's at position C. Yes. It's 
set the kinetic energy equal to EK. And we can sub in our values. VC is equal to 2 times 981 joules. All over the mass of this roller coaster, we said it was 100 kilograms way back when. All square rooted. And I'm not going to do the unit analysis to show that that works out to being meters per second. We've done that enough times now. Although you might be asked to someday on an evaluation. Would you have an extra kilogram Okay, well let's let's deal with the unit analysis then. Okay, joules is kilogram. Okay, I'll just do it anyways. Kilograms cancel out. Meter squared per second squared. Okay, VC is. It always works out. It's like mathematical. Nick. Meters per second. I like it. Well. What? Yeah, it it's is really kind of 4.43 meters per second. That's that's up at the top of the loop, right? That's like one one thousand, 4.43 meters per second. 